This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix, shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto, imagine more. On One Software, software that gets you back to shooting. Adorama, more than a camera store. Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flashbenders for speedlight enthusiasts. Nick Software, photography first. And B&H Photo, the professional source. Everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Grid Live, brought to you by KelbyTraining.com. I'm joined today by two very, very special people here. First, on my right, we have Mr. Frank Doerhoff. Hello. How are you doing, Frank? I'm doing great. Straight from the Netherlands? Uh, actually, <laughs> Dubai, Netherlands, New York, and of course, I end up with friends at Tampa. But where do you, you live in the Netherlands? I live yeah. in the, uh, live. I believe so, yes, yes, we live in the Netherlands. Last time so, you checked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and uh, also we have as a special guest today, Catherine Hall. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm great. Doing good? Thanks so much, yes, yeah. straight from San Francisco. Straight from San Francisco, on your way somewhere else? Anguilla. Where is that? Caribbean. Okay, we talked about this. Knows, I kind of knew. No one but. knows where Anguilla is. It sounds a lot more exotic, and they go, where's that? And I say Caribbean. The Caribbean. Like, oh. Cool. All right. So, uh, so hey, guys, we, thank you for joining us. We have a very, very cool show for you today. We also, if you're wondering where Scott Kelby, Scott is now in France today. He is our French counterpart over there, way, way yonder, about Hello. 15 feet away. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. It is so great to be here. Very, very great to be here all the way from France. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whenever, whenever Pete's on over there, he wears, like, French fry hats and everything yeah, like I that. Yeah, I know. I got nothing, dude. It was, a, <laughs> it was kind of a, you know. It was a last-minute thing. Yeah, I was. Uh, How'd you make it to France so quick? Uh, uh, the Concorde. They brought, they brought it back. <laughs> Just, just for this, this, one, this one week. It's like a week thing. Time. And I was like, she had a book way in advance. Okay. Anyway, hey guys, so we got a very cool show. We got, in fact, we got a lot of things going on today. Um, so first off, we have both Catherine and Frank on here. And, and, and we kind of talked a little bit before the show. And they've got a, a ton of great information for, for you on two very different topics. Uh, Catherine is going to talk about the business of wedding photography. And Frank is going to, Frank's got five, and I've heard most of these tips already, but Frank has got five killer tips for fashion photography. And when I say five killer tips, I mean, you've got to hear these tips because as soon as you hear them, you're going to be like, holy crap, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And are things you've never thought about. Scott was telling me before. Yeah. So uh, Frank is, is actually here in Florida working on a book, uh, book with us. And so Frank and I have spent the last like two or three, which camera do I look at? Oh, there's a camera over there. <laughs> that one. Hi. So I spent the last uh, two or three days working with Frank, and Matt asked me, how's it going? I said, dude, I've learned more about photography in the last <laughs> few days than I've learned in about a year. Uh, I learned more about light meters in five minutes with Frank than I knew in my entire life. So it's, it's been wonderful. It's been really, really great. And, and so that's when we were talking about these tips, and Matt says, dude, he's got to share some stuff on the, on the grid today. So he's going to give us some tips because that's how he rolls. He's tippy. He rolls all Holland-like. What's, what's the book, and when may we expect it? <sighs> It's top secret. It involves a lot of paperwork and... Do we have a name for the book yet? That's we're, the problem. We're, we're, we have a working oh. title. We're still working on it. I want to say the name yet because we're massaging it. But it will be, it will be released by Do Photoshop you World. Do massage your names? He'll be signing them at Photoshop World in Orlando. Yeah. Oh, but it, cool. it's, I can tell you this. I can, I can give a little thing about it. It's about uh, how to shoot models. That, that's so tiny about what it's about because Frank talks about things in this book I've never seen in any book. It's incredibly eye-opening. It's not the same stuff everybody else has done. There's no sense in writing a book that everybody else has mm -hmm. done. Frank is writing something very, very different, very, very specific. It's going to blow people's mind. I know. I have no doubt it will, Frank. Yeah. Just raise the bar a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So in addition to that, we're going to get to that stuff uh, in a minute here. We have, uh, we have two very special guests on the show today. They're, they're here via a Google Hangout, and they both happen to work for Google. We have Josh Haftel and Denise Ho. Um, I, can we see? Oh, we can see him. Yeah. Josh, you got you got the the different goatee going here now. Hey, it's not a goatee, man. Oh, this is I November know. right here. This is <laughs> straight up November. So, what's the official term for 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 what that is? Uh, it's just a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I mean, I have to be very clear though, because under the rules and stipulations of November, it cannot be a goatee. 
so that you can see I shave right here. And that's the differentiation. <laughs> it's, it's not connected, therefore it's not a goatee. <laughs> okay. So can you tell us what Movember is? Because I bet most people don't know. Yeah, Movember is uh, it's changing the face of men's health. So basically the idea is to raise awareness for men's health, uh, testicular and prostate cancer. So uh, a bunch of people grow a mustache and then pe when people ask you, why do you have that funny mustache? You can tell them, because I'm raising awareness and funding for uh, men's health. And so we do this throughout the month of November. Mo is Australian for mustache, so they called it Movember. And then we, uh, we go out there and we raise some funding, and it all gets donated to um, some really good causes. Awesome. So, so my it's really easy to grow a mustache for some of us, so it's the, the least we could do, basically. <laughs> cool deal. My brother grew a mustache for this, and it not as cool as Josh's. And I don't think everyone, everybody's is as cool everyone, as Josh's. He comes to family dinner, and all of us are like, what is this mustache? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know what it was for, but. Cool. All advice. right. And Denise, we have Denise. Uh, I, th I think I saw you on there. Is she, there she is. How are you doing, Denise? Hi, nice to meet everyone. I'm good. So uh, so we have Josh and Denise on today because, um, you know, way back, a while back in September, um, I think you might have heard that, that Google bought Nick's software. So one of the first things that happened is is being in being in the photography and Photoshop industry, and I think both of you, both of you guys will will uh, relate to this. Um, photographers love their plugins, and Nick has a lot of great plugins, and I, I think photographers have become really used to them. So we got a ton of questions, and just the industry in general had a, a lot of questions about what was happening, what was happening with Nick as as far as it went with Google, and uh, and what the future held. So that's why we have Josh and Denise on here today. A lot of questions and a lot of panic. There was. A there was definitely. Panic. That was the first thing you saw yeah. the next day, I remember. And I don't know what, what Josh and Denise, I don't know what you guys noticed, but uh, there was quite a bit of, of speculation going on in the days after. Oh, yeah. We, we saw a lot of that. That's something that uh, we, we definitely have our ear to the, the floor. I mean, we, Denise and I both work on the Google Plus team, so we are definitely have our eyes and, and uh, fingers on the pulse of the social media world and, and see all the questions flying fast and furiously after the announcement went through and a lot of speculation. And we, we, we've yeah. uh, seen that and tried to answer those questions, but I think that's part of the reason why you guys have invited us on today to help Ab answer some of those questions. Absolutely. And, and can, if we can just jump right in. Um, so, I mean, I think the first question is kind of what's the state? What's the state of Nick, of Google with Nick now? And, and what's the state of, of where everything's at? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think that right now the, the state is, uh, you know, we were talking about this before we went live, there is a, a lot of um, kind of the goal is to keep on going status quo, basically. We're, we're still moving forward. Uh, I used to work for Nick Software, so that's kind of the reason, part of the reason I'm on here. So I was. Yeah, I, I apologize, Josh. I should have uh, yeah. should have introduced you too. So, 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 Josh, I've known Josh for a few years now, and Josh uh, did work with, with Nick Software. What was your role back with Nick, Josh? Um, I ran the product management department at Nick Software. Okay, so now you're a Google Plus product manager. That's right. I work in Google Plus now, part of uh, the, the Google Plus Photos team uh, that Denise runs, and so I'm basically trying to take those things moving forward. I mean, we also have the engineering team from Nick as part of it. We've got customer service team members, and, and we've got uh, education team members that are now part of Google, all focused on the Nick Software product line. So our goal is to, to continue to provide support for Nick Software products, continue to develop Nick Software products, and see where the future goes. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities and possibilities in the future, but I think you may have seen at one point uh, Vic Andotra, he's the senior vice president in charge of Google+. Plus. He posted a comment uh, with uh, echoing the same sentiment of, of focus, of commitment towards those professional, prosumer, advanced amateur, hobbyist photographers who have come to know and love Nick Software products that we're not going to abandon them. That's definitely our, our number one message we want to bring out there is that we're not going to abandon those photographers. We yeah. want to continue to provide support. So, and, and I saw that message as well, and I think... Uh, some of the comments that that I saw after that message, and and uh, I, I thought I thought we saw them quite a bit actually, because um, because I saw it, it was we'll, we will continue. We're not abandoning. We will continue support. And there seemed to be like there, it left a lot of room for interpretation, as far as as saying we're continuing support and everything. And I guess it left people wondering, okay, but what's the future hold? Because it, I don't think people are just as concerned about you know. Let's say I love Color Effects Pro. And I use it today. I, I really, I build everything around it. So it's not just about Color Effects Pro for me today, 
but I also kind of want to know two, three years from now, what's this mean for me? It, it, am I going to be using the same version two or three years from now, or is there going to be, is there, is there working toward maybe new things on the horizon? So um, I'll take that. So um, so I, uh, unlike Josh, I kind of represent the Google Plus side, right? Um, I've actually been um, the the first ever, one of the first ever advocates of, of Nick over here at Google. And much of the reason um, why we felt Google and Nick together made so much sense is because Nick is actually a very, very special company. And it's special because it has, it has spent over 15 to 17 years of existence really honing in on the photography market, right? It never really second for, uh, settled for second best. It didn't try to diverge and get into any other different areas. It tried to really make the best photographic tools for photographers. And I think Josh and a lot of the engineers and a lot of the individuals at Nick speak for that. And it was because of that that Google purchased the, uh, Google actually made the purchase and bought the company. Um, and we really, really believe that in order to make photography awesome for everyone out there, we have to make it awesome for the um, for for the people who are essentially at the top of the pyramid, right? The photographers and the people who are very, very, very passionate about about photography. So what I would say is that. Um, we don't plan on we don't plan on abandoning uh, high-end photographers and and the plugins and the solutions that people have come to love. Um, we plan on investing more in it. Um, right now, our focus is to make sure the customers feel uh, the continuality that they feel like you know the same level of love, the same level of support, the same level of education that they they've come to learn and love from Nick is there. And you know we are obviously kind of moving as quickly as we can to to continue that momentum, right? And bring more and more goodness to the photography community. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and I think you guys, you guys will, uh, if, if anybody had heard it, it, you know, there was so much, there was so much around Google bought, Google bought Nick for Snapseed. And I think that's why a lot of the pros you know, yeah. and, and you use you use Nick plugins. I mean, and I Frank use, uses Nick, yeah. uses Nick use plugins. So there was so much around around you know they just got it for Snapseed. They don't really care about the plugins, and so we're going to be mm -hmm. left out. Yeah, and I will. Get, you know, frankly, I I think it's because the fact that you know we're you know we're in the tech industry. The space is very very fast moving. Obviously. Uh, Google cares, we care a lot about mobile photography just as, as much as we care about, you know, uh, traditional photography as well. And it was interesting because I think that was a first gut instinct for the press to, yeah. to write about as well as to say, oh, you know, like because of everything that's going on um, competitively in the space, surely Google must have bought this only because of, of Snapseed and mobile. And one important point I'd like to make is that I think everyone in the audience knows that Snapseed is also a very special piece of mobile photo editing application. It's it's uh, it's special because of all the things that Nick has done over the years in high-end photography, right? And therefore, even Snapseed as a mobile app, it doesn't feel just like any other photo editing app. It feels very special. You can do some very, very powerful mm -hmm. things in it, and the level of um, artistry and um, photography that you can achieve through that is, is, is like nothing else. And that's all because of the investment and the effort that the team has made over the years to photographers. So yeah. um, I think that has been a winning formula and you know Google very much recognizes that, so yeah. Okay, um, so I think uh, Scott is, <laughs> Scott's over there waving at me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I think Scott had a question okay. too. Denise, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. So, so Denise, here's the thing. I, I agree with what you said, but I wanna ask you a follow-up question if it's okay, because uh, I do not think that Google bought, in any level, bought uh, Nick for Snapseed. I, I read it in the press all over the place, so I'm saying that is total BS. It will, and I wanna tell you why I think it real quick. Uh, first, mm -hmm. because uh, I, I don't know how many millions of copies that Snapseed sold, but let's say that it was three million copies, right? And it was what, five bucks or something? Four ninety nine, two ninety nine. It was very yeah. inexpensive, right? And there were deals where it was on yeah. sale for ninety nine cents <laughs> and stuff. So Google isn't like, oh man, we can make fifteen million dollars. <laughs> you know, that's like the last thing in the world. Google's like fifteen million dollars. What a failure! We don't want to do that. So I don't think you bought it for that. And plus, you guys don't sell downloadable apps. 
right? You don't, you don't sell apps. You don't sell plugins at all. This is, by the way, this is what's got everybody freaked out. So when we're talking about being freaked out, and Josh, this is for you too, is we're freaked out because you don't sell stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Everything at Google's free. Google Plus is free, unless I want to buy an ad. But outside of that, right, you don't sell applications, you don't sell plugins, and now all of a sudden your guys are in the plugin business? Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. But that's my concern, is that, and I think it's a lot of our concern, is you're a company that doesn't sell products, but you just brought a product. Yeah. I cannot imagine, just me personally, I cannot imagine that I'm going to see Google Color Effects 5 next year. But that aside, here's my thing. I think the reason why that, well, I read on the web people saying that the reason you bought Nick is because Facebook bought Instagram. I think that's total bull. That's number two that I think is total bull because it, Facebook bought Instagram to get their community, not to get a plugin that, not to get an app that does effects. Do you know how many apps there are that do effects yeah. that are just like Instagram no, they on the, the web? There's a million of them. You could have bought a company for a thousand bucks that would have done the same, the same stuff that Instagram does. What my question to you is, why did why did Google really buy Nick software? I, and I agree with what you said, Denise. They're a very special company. They are, I mean, we worked with them a lot. They're incredible people with incredible technology. And Nick software is a part of my everyday work workflow. You have never, and no one's ever seen me out on the road teaching where I didn't open up Nick software. It's, it's that much a part of my life. I want to know the real reason. It's not Snapseed. It's not to sell plugins. Come on, tell us. So... <laughs> I, I will offer my perspective, and I think, Josh, you can totally offer yours as well, right? Um, but, like, it's actually really, really simple. Like, it's, it's you know, it's not necessarily about, uh, like you said, it's not, it's not about revenue stream, one thing or another, right? Right. It, it comes down to Google genuinely believes that um, photography needs to be awesome, and it needs to be awesome for everybody. It needs to be awesome for um, professional photographers, photo enthusiasts, you know, um, everyday people. And Nick is the best company out there that stands for that. And we just, you know, I, I think Google has a, a, a track record of excellence in general. When we want to do something and we believe in something, when we believe in saying, hey, we want photography to be awesome. And it's not just, you know, Vic and Dotra and Sergey being awesome photographers themselves and embracing the community. Um, we go all the way, and we just want the best people out there who really believe in the same mission as, as us to make, you know, to really change, you know, um, the landscape of this industry and to continue to push really hard um, to to make really, really great photography products for um, for all of our users. So, you know, there's there's not really any secret plan, so to speak. It's just it, it's just really it comes down to, you know. Uh, you know, our team focused on photos. We want to change the world through photos. Google has always believed in excellence and, you know, having the best talent and the best team that really is passionate about what they're doing. And um, that that's the reason. So, you know, it, it comes from it comes down from genuine commitment, I think, to the space. So and I think one yep, thing that I could yep. add in here just real quickly is is that, you know, Scott, you were you're mentioning, you know, Google does not sell anything. Actually, Google does sell a lot of stuff. And it's something that I've learned some, from being in here. I mean, there are also like the Google Docs for businesses and, and Google Apps for business that are a paid application. And, and there is nobody buys that stuff, Josh. <laughs> But, no, I mean, seriously, <laughs> there is the goal of, of having free products. And then there's also the goal of having, like, more specialized products for people that need something that's more specialized, that has more focus on, on the higher end kind of elements. And it enables us to focus our efforts on what, what Denise was hinting at before, which is if we focus on the top folks, it enables us to create trickle-down technologies that will work in a more simplified, automated manner for everybody. But in order to get to that, those points, as Denise also mentioned, there's no way we could have ever made Snapseed if it hadn't been for the 12 plus years of development and research we put into the high-end products. I mean, we wouldn't have had the, the control points, we wouldn't have had the drama, we wouldn't have had a lot of the other technologies like structure and the grain and all the other stuff that was inside of there. And, and you're right, you know, when you, when you pointed out how much money did we make off of Snapseed, we were still making more of our money off of the plugins. That was where the, the vast majority, and, and the Snapseed was really us trying to get into that uh, functionality 
of, of enabling us to offer something for everybody, but still utilizing the folks that, that need something special at the top level. So I think that there, that is the, the goal, and there is still going to be, and you will see uh, products that we continue to offer for people and for professionals that are still going to be a, a paid offering, and they're going to continue to offer you know, the same level of support that we offered before and the same level of education that we offered before. You know, we brought over a team of customer service and educational folks specifically to support the professional and prosumer level products that we have uh, available. You know, so myself and my team would not have a job if we don't have that options. Right. So I'm, I'm definitely very well looking forward to providing that goal and, and continuing that. And of course, we, you'll see it. I mean, it, it's hard to say because, of course, the future is it's coming up. Um, and there's a lot of things that we can't speak about very specifically, as you can imagine. Um, but you, you'll see that uh, we will con we continue to commit and provide that level of support. Okay, so, so Josh, I, I, I know that you guys are supporting the product still. So I, I'm just going to ask you one last question, and I turn it over to Matt, because Matt has the hard questions. I have just the easy questions. So my question is, and this is Josh. So Josh, now, Denise, you, you, worked, you were at Google before, right? You were on the Google Plus team? Correct. Okay. So Josh, you, you came from Nick, right, of course? Yep. So, so you can tell me, right? <laughs> so Josh, <laughs> because, you know, you're like an outsider. Are we gonna bosses on the call. Are we going to see? <laughs> oh, but maybe I shouldn't ask this question. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Matt. <laughs> Denise, can you drop off for a second? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'll just turn it over to Matt because I'm only going to ask oh, a question. On, that's gonna you just ask him. No, ask nobody will hear. It'll just be between you, you and him. Everybody else won't okay. listen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Every, everybody that's watching, don't watch for a minute. So, Josh, in your opinion, just you and me talking. Don't forget everybody else. You guys do something else over there. <laughs> Are we going to see Google Color Effects 5? Do you think? Do you think? You don't have to tell me inside information, but your opinion. I think next year, 2013, sometime, we're going to say, hey, we're releasing a brand new plugin, and it's an update to what we did. I really hope so. I mean, that's, that's my personal desire. I mean, I can't tell you for sure. I mean, I don't have any control necessarily of over course. what we release, but. I would love to see that. I mean, we have an amazing amount of technique technologies that we have never been able to release yet. We've got all these things that we've been working on for years. I mean, a lot of those things that we work on, they don't just happen in a very short period of time. We've got a, a whole team of research scientists that, that are focusing on these technologies. So we've got all these things that nobody even knows about, that we have access to, that we would love to get out there. And the best place I still feel to get these things out there into the hands of the professionals that need them to be able to get their job done and, and that means that they have to have a very specific goal set and a very specific kind of interaction and, and has to fit into a, an actual workflow, which you guys are, of course, the masters of. And, and we see ourselves still fitting into that uh, moving forward. So I, I definitely hope that we'll see those things moving forward. I mean, that's, that's definitely my goal. And we'll see a lot of other things too. I mean, we have this, it, what's, what I found amazing is Google has no shortage of amazing talent and major technologies also. And I'm, I'm really curious to see what will happen as we integrate closer and closer and find ways of leveraging uh, technologies and capabilities that both teams have. Okay. Okay. Hey, Josh, just one thing, Denise, too, both of you. 2016, if you guys decide to run for office, I want to be your campaign manager <laughs> because you two were awesome. You were, you're Teflon. You're totally nothing sticks. <laughs> thank you, though. No, thank you. I mean, I, you know what it is? We, we, this comes from a place of love. Number one, we love Google. I mean, look what big fans we are at Google+. Plus. We love Nick Software. Two of our, fa our favorite companies just came together. So we're just hoping that, you know, we love these plugins, we love this stuff. We hope that it is America. And, and from, from what you're saying, I, I, it does sound like uh, it'll be something that's going to be good for the community. It's just not knowing is killing us. Yeah. But let's let some more killing happen with Matt Kluskowski. <laughs> All right, so guys, two more questions, and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll let you get back to work. Um, so one of them's rumor, and one of them is is an actual. I think a lot of people have noticed it out there. Uh, so the first one, B and H Photo, a lot of people have noticed that they don't sell Nick plugins anymore, and I think it, it might even say discontinued on there, which which makes the case even worse. But uh, you know, big. I mean, B and H Photo, huge huge store, and uh, and they don't have Nick plugins anymore. Josh. Denise, anybody? You want to so take it, Denise? Continue. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, it does. Uh, well, it says discontinued. We're looking at the yeah, website right does, now. It does say discontinued. I've seen it on their, their website also. And it's, an, I guess, an unfortunate choice of words, we should say. Uh, but <laughs> yes. in, in the end of it, um, one, I can tell you, point blank, without any kind of political uh, spin, that the products have not been discontinued. Uh, but what we have done is we have consolidated our, our resale efforts or our selling efforts into an online electronic download delivery system only. We no longer have box products. And so one could argue that what the thing that is discontinued is the box product. So we have, in some sense, discontinued box products. But the product itself, still live and kicking, you can go to www.nicksoftware.com today and in the future to go okay. and buy the product. And the products are all available right there. You can still get them, and there's there's no reason to, okay. to worry or to fret. But gotcha. it, it really was because we were noticing the trend going in the direction of – Oh, yeah, you're not alone. A lot of people – a lot yeah. of companies are not selling box products anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for us, what we always found was a box product was – it was unecological. I mean, we were sending a – this box full of air and a piece of plastic around the world and on that piece of plastic was a piece of software that was already old by the time that you got you it had to you update had to it download another version so in many regards it was just kind of silly i mean it really yeah. was silly to have these box products okay uh, and so it enabled us to, to be a little bit more direct and, and focus in on, on what we do well which is we make great products and great software and that's what we want to focus our efforts on all right, last question. This one's definitely more rumor, uh, and and we heard it. We heard it quite a bit in the the latest the, the Photo Plus conference that was in New York recently. I've seen some things uh, around on it. Um, engineers. So we all know that that you guys had you know a great group of engineers that were behind the making of a lot of your plugins. And there's been rumors that have been floating around out there that those engineers are no longer working on these products, or, or actually that the engineers were let go. So anything. On that one definitely rumor and definitely the wrong rumor um, okay we just finished talking i just finished talking to many of those engineers just now <laughs> right before this call um like we said before they're totally the soul of what nick is um we um the engineers all are all here we're we're working really hard and um, they're coming up to speed as googlers and i think they're really really enjoying it um we're learning a lot from them on the Google side about Nick and how, how Nick has put photography first through the years. And um, I have to say that I think it's it's the beginning of a pretty awesome journey. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, Denise, Josh, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time. We know you're very, very busy over there creating uh, Google Color Effects Pro 5. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> to be released in 2013. Yes. <laughs> well, we will quote you on a 2013 okay, release for that. So. We're going to get on this. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, no, thank you very much for uh, for joining us on the show today. We really do appreciate it, and I, and I think everybody out there appreciates it as well. Because Scott Scott hit the nail on the head by saying it, there are so many passionate people out there that that love that love Google's products and that love Nick's products, and just just not knowing seem to be killing everybody. So I think you guys helped out quite a bit. So thank you very much, um, guys. We are uh, we still have Catherine and Frank here on the show today, so we're going to take a very quick break and then get right back into it with these two guys. We'll see you back here in a minute. For more than 25 years, Peach Pit has been home to the world's best authors and continues to publish the best books, ebooks, videos, and apps. Whether you're an aspiring or established photographer, Peach Pit is here to help you learn new techniques and inspire your creativity. Peach Pit, the future looks creative. The best way to describe my philosophy is that I don't use light to light my models, I use light to paint my models. My name is Frank Doroff and join me on Kelby Training for my new classes on being creative and getting the shot. So in these classes I'm not going to show you only about techniques. I'm going to show you how to use the light meter, how to meter several scenes. But what I'm going to show you more is how to create interesting images and how to make the most of your locations. I'm Frank Doorhoff. Check me out on kelbytraining.com for my new classes. Hello, my name is Lindsay Adler and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. Here 
New York, it is filled with creative, passionate people. There are makeup artists, hairstylists, wardrobe stylists that love what they do. In fashion, there are no rules. It's all about your creativity. So when I'm doing a fashion shoot, I can focus on the lighting, on the models, on the poses, and instead I have everybody else adding their own creative contributions. It's whatever vision I have in my mind, I can make it a reality. Hey everybody, we are back live on the grid with Catherine Hall, Frank Dorhoff, and the upcoming Google Color Effects Pro 5. Six and seven. Six and seven, <laughs> all coming in 2013. You know, Matt, I don't even have time to find replacements, so I'm, I would be really happy if they continue. <laughs> All right, so uh, so let's see here. We'll, we'll we'll start with Catherine first here. So Catherine, you are a wedding photographer based out of the San Francisco yes. Bay Area. Yes. Um, how long you been shooting weddings? Um, we're moving in five months now. Five months? Yeah. You've been shooting weddings for. <laughs> That's no. a good one. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> no, five years. Yeah. The people you let on your show. I mean, geez. I know. Or, <laughs> didn't someone check my qualifications? No, apparently not. <laughs> anyway. No, I've been shooting since 2007. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so shooting full time. Yeah. I started shooting when I was 16. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk about that transition. That's. A, I think that's a great place to start. And by the way, so anybody that's, uh, if you're watching, you know, part of this show really, I think, thrives on on people's questions coming in. So if you guys are watching the show, feel free to tweet in, leave a, a comment on the blog, and uh, we've got people that are pulling those. So if you've got questions for Catherine, wedding photography, in a little while, we're going to talk to Frank about fashion photography. But feel free to, to send them in. So let's talk about that transition to shooting full time. How did it happen? Well, I, well, so 2000, I fell in love with photography when I was 16, and my professor, we had an open house, and you know, when parents come, and I had my own little area, and I was really proud of it, and I was just kind of standing by it, like listening to people talk about it. And I heard one of the professors telling one of the some other parents like, oh yeah, this, she's very talented, but she would never make it as a professional. Really? And I overheard that and I was like, what a jerk. And then it became my life mission. No kidding. Yeah, no. So who knows? He may have had an impact. Yeah. The road um, to revenge. Yeah, <laughs> road to revenge. No, um, so I did photography. I knew I wanted, uh, originally I did what everyone wants to do. Or everyone wants to be a National Geographic. Yeah. Photojournalist. Mm -hmm. That's that's the thing. So um, went to college and um, went and lived in New York and worked for Steve McCurry, who's Afghan girl, green eyed mm -hmm. photographer, and also worked at Getty Images and was around a lot of photojournalists and realized that that lifestyle was not what, not that's the dream that was painted in all of our minds mm -hmm. in school. It was just a lot of travel and a lot of a just lot of no away. relationships. You know, like yeah. if you have a cat, you're lucky. So um, figured that wasn't the life for me and just felt lost, really lost for a while and was just kind of drifting around trying to figure out what type of photography I wanted to do. I remember following you back then too. I mean, that was, that was probably, what, six or seven years ago. Yeah. yeah, so I was in New York at that time. And then I um, photographed a wedding and my first wedding was 2006, October. And I just loved it. It was really challenging. It combined all of the aspects of photography that I thrive on. So it was portrait, it was photojournalism. You get a little bit of that was, journalistic yeah. style in there and too, And then yeah. details and scene setters and storytelling. And um, it was just, you know, and I think the great thing about photography now with weddings is that you really can make it what you want it to be. Yeah. So it's not the taboo, oh, you're a wedding photographer and it's very traditional, unless that's what the route you want to take, mm -hmm. but um, you know you really can kind of express your own style and, and do what you love and shoot in a way that is um, really in terms of who you are as a photographer, who you are as a human being, and not compromise. Did you uh, did you start out? Did you start out as a second shooter with somebody, or did you jump right in and and um, I think hey, that's I'm going to go actually, shoot my own wedding? Or I think that's a really good wedding. question, and I think that one of the misnomers are just sort of. Um, things that are out there that these are the paths you have to take you have to first you have to do this and you have to be a second shooter and then you have to mm -hmm. and I don't think that that's necessarily right for everyone and I felt that because that was what was told to me was the track that I needed to be on I needed a second shoot and so I found a job working for one of the top New York studios and I second shot two weddings and I was this is not for me and I said I'm not I don't need a second shoot and so I just went and did it on my own 
And I think that you don't, it, just because the second shooting is great and you don't want to script someone's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to definitely evaluate what level you're at. But yeah. at any place that you are in your photography career, I don't think you should do things because people tell you that's the path that you should take. I think you should do them because you feel like you need them to grow. Mm -hmm. And so second shooting for me, I'd been photographing since I was 16. It wasn't really something I felt I needed. So I just started doing my own weddings. Uh, Mr. Kelby, you raised your hand over there. I just want to say one thing because you brought up the National Geographic thing. Yes. Matt knows about this, but Frank does and I haven't, never, I haven't announced it publicly, but uh, I just signed a contract with National Geographic. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. So I get uh, 12 issues. <laughs> All for fourteen ninety-five dollars a year. Awesome. <laughs> was, were you telling me my mic was on? Did you hear anything I said? We did. You guys did. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here, no, we got to ask the question again. So, so, so what is this, Scott? You have some big news about National <laughs> so Geographic? Here, yeah, she was saying, talking about National Geographic. And, uh, you know, and you brought it up. And so I, I, yeah. Matt knows about this. Frank, Frank, you know, doesn't. Now knows. But uh, I just announced it here that I signed a contract with National Geographic. So woohoo! very excited. Good yeah, go, I get, man. Uh, 12 issues, uh, 1995. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at the end of the year, I can renew, or is that it's pretty exciting? <laughs> or there's auto renew too. There's it's, auto uh, renew. I, I mean, they'll keep taking it back every year. I didn't check the auto renew. They're going to send me an email. <laughs> so pretty. To make it exciting again. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Catherine, we got so actually you got a lot of questions rolling in here. Uh, CR Photography says, uh, "Hey, Catherine. So, what advice would you give to a new wedding photographer? I'm shooting my first one in two weeks. I actually think you just gave him some advice, but uh, what other advice? He's shooting his first one in two weeks, um, or she." I would say expect to be, expect be rattled a, a couple times, and it's it's a big responsibility. So just understand it's normal to get nervous and be stressed out your first wedding. Mm -hmm. um, so just take deep breaths and make sure you have a good team with you. So whether that is having another second shooter or, um, you know, I didn't have much funding with my first wedding, um, and I had a boyfriend come along and help with lighting and just there, be there. So having someone with you that will help kind of keep you calm and can help with the lighting and carrying your gear around. Um, so th that would be my tip. Okay. Surround yourself with good people. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, Bev. Bev has a question. This is a very good question, actually. Okay. So question about Catherine's top model release app, which we're going to talk about in a second here. Don't you have a new something uh, yeah, new so coming up? Yeah, so do something new cooking. Um, so in uh, your top model release app, what, what to do when you have a family with more than one minor? Release for each one. Um, hi, Bev. I know you. We talk on Google Plus a lot. Nice, oh. to, nice to see you. Our, your words, anyway. <laughs> um, so the general rule with model releases, especially when it comes to agencies and whatnot, is you really should get a release for every single person that you're photographing. So Getty Images and other stock agencies require that. Um, so yes, I understand it would be a lot easier if you could put multiple people on one release, but it could compromise the validity of it. So it's always better to be safe and just get one release per a family member. However, um, in top model release, we actually have a duplicate um, function now where you can, it will input all, it will just change the model's name and input all oh, the cool. yeah, original so you, information. So you're not having to fill out all the data except for changing the model. So cool. we're doing things, we're recognizing that it's annoying to have to get multiple releases in one shoot environment. So easier. we're making it easier. So, and we're going to show you a little bit of that, yes, that we will. in a second yes, here. We will. All right, let's see, Catherine. Uh, oh, here's a good one. So Johan says, Catherine, if you wouldn't shoot weddings, what would you shoot? Um, well, I don't just shoot weddings. So that, that I guess, I, I mean, I do a lot of other work. If you, had to, if you had to do another photography business, what would it be? Um, well, I mean, the other types of work that I do are um, corporate work and not normal corporate photography, but more like lifestyle like photography. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also do some celebrity work with families where I go in and live in their home for a few days and photograph 
their kids oh, yeah? and their families. Yeah. That's so cool. it's giving it a different look. So they've been covered in the media a lot, but they don't have, it's very superficial. So it's it's kind of like a more like intimate, kind yeah. Of what you were just saying. Like what it's really like inside their houses and inside their homes. So that's cool. I would I would focus on that. So I'm I'm just gonna I want to jump over to Frank because as soon as I saw that question, it got me wondering. So Frank, no, I wonder which one. If you didn't shoot fashion, what would you shoot? Oh, I love street photography. Yeah. I've been really infected with that virus. So uh, yeah, I'm totally in love with it. Actually, due to uh, Jay myself. So, so you'd walk around with your, what, what kind of camera do you use? <laughs> oh, I knew that one was coming. <laughs> you walk around um, with your big, no, not that one. What's the no. other camera you use? Oh, the other camera I use. Oh, yeah, for the fashion work, I use the medium format camera. So you wouldn't walk around with the medium format no, camera? No, 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 no. I, uh, Would you walk around with that? Actually, uh, for the street photography, I use two cameras, the Fuji series. I'm now testing the uh, EXM one. We call it the sexy one. Mm -hmm. And the Sony, I recently, um, Sony asked me to do the introduction at Dubai for the Alpha 99. And at first I didn't want to do it because it was like Sony, professional cameras, medium format, nah. Then I looked online, I was like, you know, when you see all the specs, it's like Canon and Nikon are now at the moment making evolutionary steps. And when I saw this, it was like, you know, this could be a revolutionary step. Uh, especially the EVF, and I call the EVF at this time, I call it the Wacom effect. The first two days you want to throw it out of the window and burn <laughs> it ritually. A, that's a good point. But as soon as I started in Dubai, especially when I shot a lot with uh, strong backlights, uh, the EVF, I have it so set up that with my front finger, I can just move the exposure compensation. So it's what you see is what you get. And I fell in love with the camera, and actually at this time I'm talking to Sony to, uh, well, maybe switch from, uh, I will not switch from medium format to Sony, but my Canon gear will probably go if I can, uh, if I can make a good deal with Sony, and I will probably switch completely to the A99. Cool. All right, Scott, I'm gonna ask you this question too. So, uh, so well, let's say would, uh, sports would be your favorite type of photography. So if it wasn't sports, what would you shoot? Sell well, nudes. <laughs> yeah, nudes Pete said that. Not me. I think would probably be well. I, you know what it is? I shoot. I shoot sports. I shoot travel. I shoot portraits. You know, so I shoot people. I shoot. If you say don't shoot sports, I would shoot traveler people. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's easy. But those are all things I'm shooting. Well, so yeah. um, you know what I would shoot if I didn't shoot any of that stuff? Then I would like to shoot editorial. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, cool. uh, I would, I'm, I'm not any good at it, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I've never shot any editorial besides sports. So, you know, I don't know how I would do it. Uh, an event photographer wouldn't be bad, like, you know, like shooting concerts and things like that, because yeah, cool. there's tons of money in that. <laughs> Just like there is in travel photography yes. and oh, yeah. sports photography and, oh, crap. Photography. <laughs> All right, so Catherine, uh, Matt C says, Catherine, I miss your twit photo. How is the new show podcast coming? Well, I, thank you, Matt. I miss Twit Photo a lot, too. Um, right now, it is on hold until January 2013, simply because I've got so much client work. And when I started doing the educational um, stuff, I, one of the things I really wanted to make sure is that I'm still a working photographer. And so balancing that out has definitely been challenging. Mm -hmm. But um, I will have, I've, put in, I've been trying to put announcements out there, and I appreciate your patience. And Early January, we will have. She's working on it. Yes, yes, I am working on it, and I miss Twit Photo too. I miss Leo. I miss Twit, but yeah, it is life. Cool. So, so Catherine, I don't buy it. What did you really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was giving you the Google treatment. <laughs> <laughs> just awesome. Give me the Google treatment. I like Pe I like Peter's question. Uh, Peter, let's see. I, I was gonna. Okay, I was gonna get that. I want to talk about uh, uh, Alan too, the guest oh, photographer. Good, yeah. too, so that's coming next. All right. So Peter's question. So, uh, how do you handle competition of a friend who has a digital camera and offers to shoot the wedding? I, you know, it's almost kind of the same thing as the other one. I think that's the biggest. Like, there. Okay. So I think competition, in itself, the way we use the word, is definitely a huge illusion. Meaning that competition is only there if you make it there. So there's there's all this buzz about new photographers and everyone getting digital cameras and things being cheap and accessible and competition and the industry is going to be ruined and and it's like take a deep breath like and hit the mic <laughs> hit the microphone you're not there is no competition like I am who I am and I am there's I'm the only Catherine Hall I'm the only one that takes the photographs that I take and if you just focus on that and your craft and what you're doing then you will be fine and yeah. you know it, it doesn't matter if someone else shoots a thousand dollar wedding because 
it's we're not competing you're not going to change other. that yeah and you're not going to change that there's you're, no, two things you're not going to it's change. a different client yeah you, you say thousand dollar wedding I, i'm talking about the 250 dollar wedding yeah so you're not going to change the person that shoots the 250 dollar wedding and gives them a disc at the end yes you're not going to change it you're not going to make those people go away and you're not going to change the, the other alan had a question it was kind of the same thing guest photographers you know it's oh, not, the, yeah. not the friend but it's you know uncle yeah. bob that that brings his dslr and you're sitting there taking the formals of the bride and the groom and the wedding party and uncle bob is over there come on guys look over here and so it's it's you know you got uncle bob sitting there doing that and you're not yeah. going to change that either so it's it's figure out how to adapt to it yeah, and then just and just understand, just do, just focus on yourself and not trying to worry too much about, and don't knock down your prices because you're concerned about people that are coming in cheaper. Yeah, because that's actually what makes them your competition <laughs> if you get in their price range. So um, I'd say that that's the biggest thing is is I, I I mean with all with the recession with all the digital media becoming more and more accessible, digital photography. Um, my business hasn't really changed that much mm -hmm. and I, I don't believe it has to change unless you start thinking that it needs to change and, and almost in a way sabotaging yourself. Yeah. Uh, so what well, we're talking about Uncle Bob. Yes, shooting Uncle away. Bob. What do you do about Uncle Bob's? Um, you know, does it happen to you? Of course it yeah. does. Yeah, it does happen to me. I, the main, the main time is I will politely ask like this, it is, if everyone could just put down their, like, it's only really a problem during the formals. Yeah. And then I'll just politely say, it's distracting um, if everyone could just put down their cameras just for this this portion. You can, ha you can have them in 15 minutes, just let me yeah. get through this and then. Exactly. And then I'll just I'll just ask, because the main thing is, is that pe one person's looking off and then the whole thing's kind yeah. of ruined. Um, but it hasn't really been too much of an issue, you know, and I, I see cameras out there that are just as good as mine on a regular basis at a wedding, and you just kind of go with it, I guess. All right, and uh, let's see, as, as Ranelli says, Catherine, are you, are you metering your scenes like Frank? who is the light meter, the light meter master, we'll call him. Okay. Um, Scott said something to me, Scott said something to me today in, in working with Frank on his, his book. He said, I've learned more about light meters in the last day than you had in, in the last few years, right? It was, oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Can I first answer that question? Because somehow people always think that I meter everything. <laughs> I think you do. Your eyes are meters. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the main problem with light meters is you have to know when to use them. So if I go out and I would shoot sports, do you really think I would run up the field? <laughs> I go, F8, F8, F8. No, no, no. I, I will use my light meter as soon as I need it. So when I, when I would shoot a wedding, I would shoot only with the light meter at the moment I'm using strobes to shoot the bride and the groom. I would use it to do maybe the formals. As soon as I have time, as soon as I don't have time, I will go to the ETTL mode and I will shoot it and correct it in Photoshop because that's not the place for a light meter. Mm -hmm. Good point. So I actually use and light, I agree with you. I, I use a light meter at all my weddings. She's lying. That's that lying face again. <laughs> no. Just lying. to make it look interesting, right? No, no, I mean, I don't, it's just, just what Frank said. I actually do use a light meter when I'm in a more controlled environment. I'm using strobe, whatnot. Um, and I will use a light meter if we're setting up pro photos or something like that in a reception room. Yeah. Um, but on a regular, usually I'm just paying attention to my histogram and always avoiding the LCD screen because that obviously do not judge your exposures by, way, <laughs> by the LCD screen. I never look at the histogram. <laughs> but I will look at the histogram. Do you? Yes. What do you look for? Just to make sure that the most of the data is within the realm and that it's not towards the darks, meaning knowing that the higher quality pixels are towards the lighter areas and, and trying to make sure it's contained in that area. So when so. you say higher, like higher quality pixels in the, you mean like, well, like, like it's, if the photo's brighter, you can always no, kind of pull it back a little bit. Meaning, that's okay. I mean, uh, I'm not sure about all the technology behind it, but my understanding is that the data in the the right side, the okay, so we have the histogram, yeah, the right side, the, the right darker side. side is not as as good as on the the left side. Okay, maybe it's noisier. Maybe I don't mm -hmm. know the yeah. There's know. there's a ton more. Uh, values that are covered in the top half of the histogram than no, the bottom. Stuff. The bottom half, they've measured it, right? The bottom half is very small. It's like 68, and then the top half is like 12,000. <laughs> yeah. The numbers are so far off to where there's a whole school of thought about the exposed to the right. 
Yeah. If you expose to the right, you have you capture more detail. There's more quality there, and you can always lower your exposure as long as you don't clip the highlights. But if you underexpose, then you're screwed. Then it's garbage. Then yeah. it's very yeah. grainy and yeah. thank noisy. You, Scott. It exp See? expands the noise. We need you over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> so you so you'll 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 tend to overexpose a little bit to, to be able to pull it Not necessarily overexpose, but you know, there's like I want most of my information to not be kind of clumped on the right side. Okay. I want to make it more weighted towards the left. Gotcha. So that's that's what I pay attention to. Okay, cool. Hey Matt, uh, I don't want to interrupt, but I'm going to. Yeah. So we only have a few minutes left. Oh. And Frank has got oh, five he's got his tips. tips. So I was I was automatically going to run the show a little bit over anyway. Yeah, it's going to be. I figured it's going to go over. We, we went. Yeah. We went a little. Google Google actually had you know once we got we got talking about some things that yeah you know, we spent more time there. So well, I can I, I, I talk very very fast. Um, all right. So so. All, all your questions disappeared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was one up there I was going to ask you. I can't remember what it was. So uh, hit undo. There's an undo <laughs> button on there, by the way. Great questions. By well, the let's way. just let's. So you could you have a, you have a little bit of a different photography wedding photography business too. You do a lot of destination weddings. Yes. And so I, I think it would be cool for people out there just to kind of ha how did you get into that, and how would someone get into doing destination weddings versus weddings in their their town? Oh, I think that's a really good question because I would say that's probably the most sought out field or sector of the wedding photography industry. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I'd say is be careful what you ask for. Um, traveling and shooting weddings, weddings may sound incredibly romantic, but it's also incredibly difficult. Um, I mean, I'm on my way actually to Anguilla to shoot a wedding this weekend. Yeah. So I, I love it. Which is close to Fiji. But it's definitely a lot more work. And so if you are going to be doing destination weddings, you do really need to compensate for that extra effort. And there's stuff that comes up, visas, travel plans, planes changing, flights changing. So there's just a lot extra more Extra gear. Work. I mean, you can't just... Yeah, extra gear, all of it. So um, you're, how are you gonna have a second shooter assistant? You gotta bring, you know. So if you're gonna do that, you really, your price point does need to be higher. Um, the, the thing that I've done is I've actually, I love destination weddings and not because of travel as much as I like the destination bride. And they're typically more relaxed. It's a three day affair. It's not compressed into one day and it's just a, a better vibe and, and I, I picked two locales that I, you know, Lake Tahoe and wine country, and I like the brides that want to get married in those areas. And so that's, so that's where most of my to? weddings are, and that's who I market to. And it's, I can jump in my car and drive. So I'm a destination wedding photographer, 90%, but I'm, that doesn't necessarily mean I travel. Okay. It's still drivable. Local for me, but it's yeah. destination for, for the client. I got you. So they're, they're traveling to those locations. Yeah. You're not necessarily. And I love to shoot outside, too. So, you know, there's a lot of factors. Um, you, you, if you don't enjoy shooting outside, then destination wedding photography probably wouldn't be the right route to yeah. take. Um, and, and shooting outside also comes with a lot of challenges, and you have to kind of adapt and go with those as well. So, okay. Um, but as far as, I would say, thinking about all of the different aspects of it and making a decision not based on the romantic version, but the real version. Good answer. Thanks. I like that. Thanks. All right. So we're I now it's, it it's our turn. It's our turn to grill Frank. Oh, Warhol yes. Dun, dun, Frank. Dun. How do I how do I make my wedding images? All, all my brides want to look like fashion models. <laughs> how can I achieve how? such a thing? Light meter. Like, <laughs> um, there Frank, must be a chapter Frank's like, in this here. This light meter thing is it's, getting really old. In Scott's Lightroom book, there is not <laughs> yeah. a chapter on making. No. Um, oh so, my. so Frank, it, yeah. it just kind of building off of, of what we were talking about before, and, and what Scott had said to me earlier today, um, I, I heard some of these tips, and I, I think people need to to hear these things. I think there's a lot of people out there, not just you know high fashion, but you know, shooting models and whatnot. That a lot of people shoot that stuff, and you had some really good tips. I'm gonna lead you down the direction of one, which which was one of my favorites, which was the stylizing, the stylist. Okay, so can you I, have some feelings on that? Okay, can I start? Or start with whatever you want. Don't forget one. about what I because said. Because five minutes before the show, they asked me, "Hey Frank, can you do five killer tips?" And I'm like, "In five minutes." It could okay. be four if you want. No, you could take take as long as you want. Okay, I can take as long as I want. They'll stick around for this stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Then <laughs> we, we have to go to five ten. We will. We built up the tension, right? <laughs> okay. The first thing you have to realize is a lot of people, and also here, uh, like Richard Gray, Frank, how are you finding the Sony lenses to be? Or can I use a 308 for beginners? Or can I do this? Or can I do that? The first thing I always tell to people, please, please realize it's not about the gear. It's not about Sigma. It's not about 
Canon, it's not about Nikon, it's not about the gear. If you really want to be a good photographer, go on eBay and find something that's called the Polaroid SX70. It's a Polaroid camera. Then go to the Impossible website and buy some film. Now you only have like eight or 10 exposures depending on what you buy. If you are able to make a stunning shot, and I really make a stunning shot with a Polaroid, imagine this, the viewfinder sucks. The outcome sucks because you never know what you're gonna get. You press the button, it comes out and you go like, I really hope I didn't spend 250 on this shot. Now if you are able to shoot, let's say from the eight exposures, five shots that will make you go, wow, now it's time to move to digital. You see so many people going out there like and I call it spray and pray. And in the end, they never get the real shot. As soon as you start thinking about the shot, and remember, every time you press that shutter, it will cost you two bucks fifty. It will make you think about the shot. Also because you can't see the viewfinder very well. You don't have that beautiful EVF or the beautiful LCD. If you can make a shot with a Polaroid, that's when you're a good photographer. Now going into step two, the, the first thing you will realize, if it's not about the gear, then what is it? And I was talking to Scott about it while yeah. reading my book, uh, while, uh, yeah, pre-reading my book. And he said one thing that I never heard before is I hate jeans and tank tops. You will never see me in jeans and tank tops, for example. <laughs> also not in dresses, by the way. You not know, in public. Only, only in black. <clears throat> yeah, not in public, anyway. So There goes my night, Frank. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Matt. But uh, you see so many people. When I do portfolio reviews, I see some stunning backlights. I see some stunning light. I see beautiful, beautiful models. And everything is perfect. And then you look at the image and you go like, meh. And sometimes people will go like, you know what? I have to have the beautiful Allen Chrome softbox. I have to have that Sony size lens and only the one from $24.99. Don't buy the one from $9.99. No, 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 I have to have that one. And some people even go like the SunDisc cards. They have much better color than the Kingstons, you know that? And if you use this card reader, it's better. It's all not true. Now imagine this, having a model with a beautiful dress, hair all styled, nice makeup. You can put her in the sun no lights at all, and you can have a beautiful image. Yeah. Because the image simply rocks because the model is styled. Now, if you have a model wearing jeans and tank tops, you better make sure that your lights are impressive because nothing else is impressive. And a cool location, too. Yes. Yes, that, was, see, that was what we were that, looking for. That's right there. <clears throat> okay. When he said that to me yesterday, I was like, that's it. It makes sense. If, if, you have, if your model's in jeans and tank tops, you better be a master at lighting. Yeah. But if you yeah, use a stylist and create a look, he, Frank says, you can take him out in the middle of the afternoon and get a great shot. I'm like, that's a quote of the week right there. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a much more interesting subject. It's, you've, made, you've, made, you've made what you're taking a photograph of way more interesting than jeans in the tank top. Yeah, but that's only part two. So now we go to part three. <laughs> now, when you are photographing a model, now what do you say to your model? Just stand there and they will go like, smile. And that will stay like frozen. So what I do is I will first start coaching my model, like find your own way of posing. And they will look at me like, de what? That's Dutch. Okay. And they will go like, okay. And the first thing I tell people to, to tell the model is, okay, make them stand like they're watching for, uh, waiting for the bus. Because at that time your body will relax and s move into a certain pose. Now cross your legs, and again, the body will move in a certain pose. H wear high heels if you're shooting a female, of course, because that will also change the body gesture. Now, if you, have, if you have a model that does all this very nice, you can have a nice shoot. But in the end, what I always do is I do something I call levitation photography. It's very simple. You can even do it with high heels. Just let your model stand and jump up just a little bit. And if you want to know more about it, go to Richard Effedon. He was a master in that. Movement in a shot. Don't let your models just stand there. Let them jump a little bit. And I don't mean jump like they jump from a trampoline or are athletic. No, just a little bit, just a little jump that they're like this high off the floor. That will make an image look so hmm. much better. Okay, now moving on, and I, I'm thinking about this as we go. Know when to use the light meter. And I already explained that, but I want to go a little bit more into that. There are times when you are using a light meter, and what I always do is I only use it for my main light source. The accent lights, I do meter, and I meter the background. However, why I do that is very simple. I will look because I'm shooting tethered at my screen, and now I like the backlights very much. I like the accents very much. Now I will meter the backlights again, 
and let's say my main light is on f8, my backlights are on 5.6, and my background is also on 5.6. What I will now do is in my exif value, I will place in ACC from accents minus one, BG background minus one. Every time I now want to make that exact same shot, what I do is even if I shoot an F11 or F16, I know I take out my light meter, I measure the accent lights on minus one from my f-stop from my main light. So F11 becomes F8. If I'm shooting an F16, it will be F11. And my background will be the same. And I will nail that shot every time over and over again. And this is what you see a lot on stage also where people are doing um, live shoots and they, they, they will show you an image on the screen, like, okay, I'm gonna create that image. And they, they take for like forever to create that same image. And then they say, yeah, but it's my own creativity to change it a little bit around. No, what they're actually doing is they can nail that shot again. <laughs> and yeah, that's well, how I use that light meter to, to, to do it over and over again and have that continuin, uh, conti uh, constant quality in there. I'm continuity. Still, continuity, Consistency. that's it. I have to tattoo that on my arm. <laughs> and. Uh, going further on that one, um, how to create that scenes. Now, many, many people think that their studio is too small. And what I always show, and I recently did a webinar for um, in New York, and I show that if you place your lights very close to the wall and you place your model to the wall, then you can have beautiful high contrast images. Just let's say this is the wall, the model will be standing here, place your light here, and you will have a beautiful high contrast image. Now. What people often don't realize is that shadows are the soul of a shot. So the first thing people will do when they start out photography is put two big softboxes, maybe a third one, because, well, you paid for three softboxes, so you better use, yeah, them. use them. Your wife is standing there like, you wanted three softboxes? Use three softboxes. What I say is always start with one light. Now, add a second light only if you need it. And don't be afraid of shadows. Sometimes model photography can be totally black in the shadows, but that's the soul of a shot. Without mm -hmm. shadows, there is no depth. There's no involvement with your model. There's no three-dimensionality. And the final one, uh, that's six, I believe. As soon as you have a model that has very bad skin, how should you light it? This is one of oh, the questions yeah, this that Scott came Yeah, this is one of the good ones, too. Yeah. Well, they're all good, but it's just... This now, is what you have to realize is... <laughs> a light works very, very, very simple. Um, directional of light, yes? So, meaning if you have, like, a lot of pores or a lot of problems in your skin and you light from the side, it means that all the bumps will cast shadows and highlights, meaning you will see all the problems in your skin. Just aim a strobe ra uh, straight at the model. Don't use a ring flash because those are a little bit too. Aim the strobe right at your model, but under an angle. And now th this is one of the reasons why a lot of models never look into the camera with me. With fashion, I always love them to look a little bit away from the camera. Gives it a little bit of mystery. Why? Like, just... You know, what is he doing? Where is he looking at? Uh, what's going on? Okay. With glamour, that's for you. That's private. Now I wanted to look straight into the camera. Okay, so glamour... Look at the camera. Yeah. Fashion, look away. Look away, make it mystery. Now, the reason they look away when you put the strobe like on the side is actually what I'm doing is I'm aiming the face of the model straight into the light source. And at that point, it hits the light straight on our face and all the pores will be gone. So you can use high contrast lighting. And can I squeeze in one more? You can. Very you, quickly. You just put two in there because I think the, the where to look thing okay. is really good too. I mean, because uh, yeah, like you said, so just to, uh, it was glamour. Look at the camera, right? Camera, glamour, I want to be... So it's like be the person is supposed to want the person looking at the, yeah. the photo. I want the person to be connected with me. Like, I go right into the camera. Hello, how are you doing? You know, That's, that's very sexy idea. what you just Yeah, did Frank. I'm, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> that's hot. Cut it out. That's hot. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to end the show right now. Yeah. Oh, Scott's looking at me now, too. That's uh -oh. So anyway, very quick. <laughs> very quick, the final one for me. Um, now, when you are uh, setting up your lights outside, you know, and um, let's say I use the Maxi Spot a lot from Ellen Grom, and I have a grid on there. Now, one of the main problems is this is my model, and I want my light to be straight on her face. I want the hotspot to be there. Now, what you normally do is because outside you can't see the modeling lights. So, what do you do? You take a light meter, you meter here, F8, 5.6, F11. Okay, she's not in the hotspot. Change the light. F11, F8, F5.6. Hmm, still not. And you're wasting your battery, you're wasting your time. Imagine shooting Beyonce on set. And you're doing it like that. She goes like, mm, I have to go home. Uh, I have five minutes left. And then at the end, you finally set up your shot and your battery dies. Now you know how you can really very quickly make sure that the model is in the hotspot? If you're using a grid, 
there's only one way to know for sure, if, if you can look straight through the grid. So if you're angling your light too low, the model can't see the modeling light or the flash tube because he's actually looking into the grid and everything will be dark. Mm. So now you start angling your strobe. And as soon as the model says, now I can see the modeling light or the flash, uh, flash tube, now you know she's exactly in the hotspot. You stop, lock on your strobe, do the metering, and you will see that she's exactly in the hotspot. It's a great tip. You know, Frank, it's funny that you mentioned Beyonce because I just signed a contract with Be no. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, <coughs> great, great tips, Frank. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people are going to look forward to your book because they're, it's full of oh, it's, it's full, full of that kind of tips. Oh, it's like full that. of it. This is one it's page, <laughs> and it's like two pages long. So, ooh. so uh, there's a couple questions on here I wanted to ask you. Um, someone says, for someone just starting out, do you recommend TFP and hiring a makeup artist? I'm looking to keep costs low. So TFP, time for prints. Mm -hmm. um, do you recommend? You know, going to the model and saying, you give me your time, okay. I'll give you prints, and hiring a makeup Everything artist. Everything has a trade-off. As soon as you start renting a location, get a paid model or meet the night before. Because with TFP models, 60%, 70%, 80%, maybe 90% will never show, Don't up. show up. And when you do TFP, uh, the makeup artist will make the difference. So I would ha always pay my makeup artist and maybe hire the model for TFP or okay. give her, uh, what, what you can do by the way, and this is a very nasty uh, thing to do actually, is let your model pay you 25 bucks, and if she shows up on set, you give back the 25 bucks. And if she doesn't pay it a week in front of the photo shoot, you hire another model. So she will get the 25 bucks back, but then you know for sure that she will show up. Hmm. Th th it's a serious problem what he's talking about. Yeah. This is why when I did my light is true to retouch it to her, uh, we went to an agency to make sure the models would show up. Every single model showed up. But he's right. You can talk to, to anybody that shoots TFP. Most of the time, they will not show. So, I, and if you want to, not to beat a dead horse, but uh, so I was in, uh, last year I was in New York and I was trying to set up um, more of a lifestyle shoot in, in Central Park. And I, I, I went and I did, I did the thing, you know, I did the, the TFP thing. And the person, I was in contact with the person, right, it was gonna be a morning shoot at like 8 a.m. I was in contact with the person right up there, texting me oh, at yeah. midnight, I'm in, everything's in, We're and everything's all up. set, oh, no. 7.30 in the morning, I send a text and I say, hey, you know, I'm at, I'm at the place, I, did you mean by the park over entrance over here or by over here? Nothing, no. 7.45, all right, I'm just walking around the entrance by the church, just look for the guy in the black shirt, nothing. Eight o'clock comes, 8.15 comes, eight, nothing, they never showed up. No, I would have even, even so though many you would times. have sworn, you would have sworn at midnight the night before they were gonna be there. Frank, what about your workshop story? Oh yeah, we, uh, and I'm a little bit ashamed about that, but I couldn't <laughs> help it. Uh, we did a workshop in Boston like uh, a year ago. Mm -hmm. We booked, I kid you not, six models all paid models, because I knew at least half of them would not show up. You know which we did the model with? The assistant of the photographer, because two makeup artists didn't show up and six models didn't show up. Wow. And I had with one model an hour before the nice. workshop, I still was in contact with her like, yeah, I'm so looking forward to it, I'm bringing my dresses and oh, it's gonna be great. So we were like, okay, at least we have one model. The workshop started, I said, Brandon, uh, <laughs> can you please call the model? Oh, she doesn't pick up her phone anymore. And then at night, I got from one of the models an email. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't make it today, but I was busy. So six models booked, <laughs> no one showed wow. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, good lesson for the workshop. Definitely. Uh, so speaking of, so you talked a lot about the, the light meters and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Where would one learn about things like that? I know there's a really good book coming out. <laughs> really good. And you've got classes, too. On oh, yeah, I've got a lot of you classes. You do workshops everywhere. Yes. His blog, he's got Your lots of information. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, on my blog, I have a whole section on the right side, www.frankdorhoff.com. And every day there will be a new blog post on. And if you go to the right side, you will see a whole section on light meters. Cool. All right, Frank, I'm, 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 I'm waiting for your book to come out. So, so write it today so I can read it tomorrow. It's uh, Tonight. Go back now and write it. Can yes, yes, Mr. Matt. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do our giveaways here. We have, I've got to look at my little list here. Oh, I have. I Frank, have I know, I know, I know you're going to give away. I know. Oh, okay. There's a, 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 a little segue that. into that. Know. So we're going to give away a copy of Scott's Lightroom 4 book for digital photographers right here. See, she's looking at the, uh, she's looking at the camera. See right there? Okay. Um, um, not to, not to. 
not talk about this, but Scott, just so you, you know. Can, oh, I think you can talk about it. He my, won't mind. <laughs> um, no, it's not about this, though. Oh, okay. But your portrait Why photography. Not? I'm you're sorry, my what? Your retouching the portrait specific yes. book is my Bible. Thank it's, you. it's sitting on my desk, like right here, and there's post its. It's filled with post its. Because I'm referencing things all the well, time. Well, thank you very much. You know, we could give away one of those since you brought it up in front of everyone. <laughs> all right, so we'll give away a I'm copy. I'm just saying of... I'm a portrait thank photographer, you, so you. I have to thank say you. that You're we'll give away kind. a copy of Scott's portrait retouching book too for Photoshop. Okay, um, my, see, my book I'm to good go on, to issue. I'm, on the, I'm good on the show. Nah, no, I doubled yeah. the gifts. What's that? I said I'm good on the show. I doubled the gifts. I know you do. Thank you. <laughs> That's going to be twenty-five dollars, please. You see, when I try to squeeze in Matt's books, he goes like, no because he doesn't want to give away his book. No, he's very stingy. I want yeah. you to buy my book. <laughs> All right, fine, you can have a copy of my compositing book. <laughs> and, you want to, and you can have a copy of my layers book too, how's that? So four books. Wow. And that's not enough. It's, <laughs> we're going to be giving away stuff for like crazy here. And you're going to win a ticket to uh, one of RC's Fort Lauderdale Photoshop for Photographers seminar. Um, or, or, and or the Seattle seminar. So RC's got one coming up in Lauderdale next week, and I think Seattle the week after, and then uh, I'll give away a ticket to my two seminars coming up. I got Sacramento coming Monday, I think, Tuesday. And I got San Diego coming the following Monday, so in the next couple of weeks. So enter however you enter for prizes. There's Scott holding books up. <laughs> Here's the portrait retouching book. Here's Matt's book. You're almost as pretty as the model, Scott. Almost. I know, right? I See, I thought they were the same person. <laughs> <Hold on>. <laughs> <laughs> It's CS10. Oh, yes, there you go. Excellent. Is that, is that the right hand? That's yeah. a good look for you, Very Scott. Nice. You're missing the ring. You gotta, yeah, oh, there we go. You had to look down a if little you, bit. If we put that necklace on you, you'd be dead on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He'd have to take his shirt off, though. All right. <laughs> so leave, <laughs> here goes. leave a comment to, to win one of those prizes there. And if you want to go to one of the seminars, again, make no, sure you say... No, but I can give out you, some prizes for this. I, I am Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> Seattle, San Diego, or Sacramento. Now... Catherine Hall is going to give us a prize. Oh, you're going to let me give it. That's why. Okay, so I'll give out three. But you have to show us. I want to see the app okay. before you get because you made cool changes here. Okay, so the iPad version is being submitted to the store. Which is one of the questions. Was, is there an iPad version? Yes. Right? Scott's laughing. No, I'm laughing because RC just brought in another copy of my book. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know. He's laughing because software development is just, it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, it's a blast. No delays ever. Um, ever. No, no bugs. Bad that you have to iron out right before release. No, no, no. Um, anyhow, but we've been working very hard and diligently on this. I'm super proud of the, the universal version of top model release. Oh, there it is. It's right here. Yeah, there it is right I'm there. Like, I got my finger, got on, it. finger so, on it. For some reason, you can't see my finger, but you can see the album. And for I'm those like of you that don't forth. think you need model releases, let me tell you. You do? Yeah. I have, many, do I have time for a mini story? It's 514. Sure, why not? Okay, I'll, I'll do the quick version. Um, before I was a professional, I was just learning photography and shooting a ton, traveling, taking pictures of people. Mm -hmm. Didn't get model releases because why would I? I wasn't a professional and yeah. I don't need them and blah, blah, blah. So finally, I got to a place where I started getting recognition and Adobe came to me and they wanted to do this full story on me. And no. And so they had a, they pitched this great idea, and I was so, you know, I was beginning of photography, so excited. Like, Adobe's doing this thing on me. It's going to be amazing. And they're like, yeah, we just need model releases for all your work. Mm. And I had no model releases, and so they could not do the story. Because you, you can't have a photo, li photo list story of a photographer. Ouch. So that was it. So anyway, I'm a huge advocate for getting releases, and especially with traveling and all of it, having release on your, getting digital I'm releases, never. storing. It's great. But Scott, what do you think about this? Scott's gone. RC, you're in the hot seat. <laughs> we had a funny thing planned, but you weren't supposed to throw to him at the end of the show. Oh, oh I didn't know oh, that. that was here's, what we're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> oh, man, that would have been good. That's, that's a little freaky. <laughs> it's a little creepy, yeah. I, I, I missed I missed the, the cue. Okay, so can I start it? Can yeah. I click on I'm it? I'm going to do a quick model release of you, Matt. Okay, quick model so release. This click. is how easy it is. So we'll start from the beginning. We're just going to go to the Create screen. And let's do this in, you can do it in landscape mode. Don't click Make on it adult. easier. Do not click on adult. She clicked on adult. Okay. And so I already have you in my address book, so I'm just going to go straight there. Matt Kloskowski. That's perfect. That's, that's right. I know how to say it. Um, Give your cell phone number. 
Yeah, I put a, the, he wouldn't let me put, I had to change. This is not really Matt's cell phone for any stalkers I, I, out I there. It. I'll get it familiar. <laughs> 555 Matt was okay. born. Matt was born on December 20, December 29th, 1988 now. Here. It's 813-240-4925. So I know how old you are. You do. Oh, but, you're, you're there we go. I'll be 40 in a couple months. And then there's other fields. You don't have to enter them all for the point of time. The shoot dates today. Sure. And we just go next. And then I'm going to take, take a photo picture. of you. All right. Ready? It's going to be I'm good. Pose. Oh, wow. That's, out, that's good. Out. Chin out. Shebang it. That's good. Shebang. Should we, should we crop in real nice? Yeah, that's good. All right. I like that one. Is that recognizable? <laughs> um, and then we just Try go next. Try taking that one to court. And proceed to model signature. I have to agree and continue? Yes, you do. Oh, I'm going to sign I mean, it. All right, ready? Oh, no. That is not going to be valid. Oh, that's beautiful penmanship. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And then you just... He's creepy. Yeah. Simply email. And it's done. Two people. And it, it, puts, it automatically will email it to everyone's address. This is so much better it. than the one we use awesome. now. Oh, excellent. Yeah, and there's a duplicate nice. feature in there, too. There's, so. du there's so many features that I, I can't take the time because you guys will kick so me where, off the show and one, never invite me back. Where would one find more about this? <laughs> oh, and, and <laughs> one more thing. I'm doing a one-day sale for, for the Kelby... Are you? Viewers, yes. Oh, so right. normally it's eight ninety nine, but today only. <gasps> dun dun dun. It's four ninety nine. You're awesome. So do it. Now's so, your chance. So you don't have to, they don't have to enter a code or anything nope. like that. Just go buy it. Nope. And then tomorrow it's called we'll go top back model to release TMR. And top. I should make a note that this version is it's already right now it's out obviously, um, but the iPad native universal version will be coming out within the next two weeks is because we're submitting it today so it takes apple a little time to okay. definitely approve it, it takes some time to reject it <laughs> <laughs> but the upgrade's going to be free for anyone who owns it already okay and the android version um currently <laughs> currently working on that <laughs> no. it's in depth i know it's, it's, a, it's a huge question it's so do you know how expensive it is just to make the ipad version it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot yes, of we work do. and money. <laughs> and then yes, you're supposed to make the so Android version I, that nobody buys. when I build buys. myself 10% out of that hold, we'll talk, an whole, we'll talk Android. Yeah. <laughs> hey, All Frank, right. you have apps on, on iOS and Android? Yeah. How are they doing on iOS? Great. How are they doing on Android? Next topic, please. <laughs> I sold three on Android. Oh, oh no! That's even sadder than one. one. Yeah. Shabang. Shabang. All right, everybody now, Peter Hurley pose. I can't, I can't do that. You gotta do it. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you oh, never saw Peter Hurley do a thing? Chin thing you know? Oh, chin forward and down? Mm. That's, I think of Sue Bryce. All right. Guys. It is time to wrap up this show. We went way too long, but we had great, great topics the entire show, so I, 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 couldn't, let, I couldn't let you guys stop talking. But anyway, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us, Miss yeah. Catherine. And oh, by the way, I have to give a shout out to Dieter, who's doing all my testing for this. Dieter Rocks. Dieter, you are awesome. You are awesome. Dieter got to meet you, I don't know if you remember, in San Francisco. Oh, no, I in did. Los Angeles. I did, and I said, I said to say hi to you. What's yeah. his last name? Cheney. Yeah. I, see, I, I, yeah. I don't know how I know, but I know. You know of him. I know the name. Maybe it's maybe it's through. That's a cool name too, Dieter. Dieter, I know Dieter is a nice name. Hey, did, did, did Dieter like the seminar? He loved the seminar. Oh, thank God. Okay, good. That's he not what she that. told me before. <laughs> <laughs> Dieter didn't like it. <laughs> I told him to go, and he said that he was very grateful. Dieter asked for his money back. Frank. Yeah, that's that one return you Mitch? got. <laughs> Frank. Oh, and by the way, we sold a lot more on the iOS platform. Oh yeah, by the way. it's, it's, it's he, he, everybody he sold does. Five? It's, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Three on um, Android. Five. Frank, are you going to do the kick for us? Okay, oh, don't thank know. you so very much for watching right. so the kick. Okay. What <laughs> you might not know is that Frank can kick abnormally high okay. above his Frank, head. I really want to see it. Do Freakishly it. high. Like, no, it's, no, no, I no. mean, Frank, how tall are you? Like six, seven? Six, I never. I'm one meter six, eighty-nine. 12. Do it, Frank. Do it. It's one meter oh. something. I will do it as soon as the cameras are off. No, oh. I'll do it. If, I'll do it. On oh the wait, cameras. Frank, look, they went off. It's just on the TV screen. So show's over. Bye, everybody. I'm See Dutch, you soon. Not Take stupid. care. Take care. Bye. I'll See do you. it if you do it. Oh look. It, oh. oh, oh, she'll do it if you do it, Frank. Come on. No, no, no. He, Scott he, will do it too. I ain't doing it. I can't. I am. I. I if I don't stretch, this thing will snap like a turkey <laughs> leg. <laughs> <laughs> snap.
<laughs> All right. Hey, so we, hey, have we, a we, are, we are completely we are completely out yes. of time. Scott from France. So Catherine, where can people go to learn more about you? Um, Google Plus, Catherine Hall, Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, CatherineHall.net, backslash blog. What about Frank Duerhoff? And by the way, it's C A T H. Catherine, like Catherine the Great. There you go. Frank, where can we go to learn about you? <laughs> you like that? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> www.frankdoorhoff.com. And we are changing everything over now to a new portfolio, thanks to my buddy, RC. And, uh, well, it's going to be fun. Every day, new updates. All right. Hey, awesome. Frank, I wanna, this is just an American thing. You never, ever have to say www again. <laughs> if you say frankdoorhoff.com, people aren't going. Is that on the web? <laughs> Just frankdoorhoff.com. You okay, can you never, can go ever, to frankdoorhoff.com. When you're in the United States, you can drop the www. Now, I know in Holland. Yeah, no, we I'm have to kidding. do that. Yeah. And it's like 800 numbers. You don't, yeah, you don't have to do the one. Matt, where can we learn about you? Uh, MattK.com. Awesome. And Thanks, well, everybody. People, Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for directly. our guests. Thanks for Matt and uh, RC. Thanks for bringing my book. <laughs> and we'll see everybody next time. Bye. Bye-bye. We love you, RC. This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto, imagine more. On One Software, software that gets you back to shooting. Adorama, more than a camera store. Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, Rogue flash benders for speedlight enthusiasts. Nick Software, photography first. And B&H Photo, the professional source.